I'm BC though, this is Trinity Street Rides and Josh, the voice of Spirit Cars, he's behind the camera. We've, uh, we're working on getting a technical guy, but uh, I just wanted to check in with everybody. Hope everybody's having a great new year. It's kind of exciting. We're, we're in with a bang. Um, so show you one of the latest projects we're doing. We got projects going on everywhere. Um, it's, I mean, we're just busy. You're busy over in Spirit too, aren't yes, you? Yes, very. Crazy busy. We're busy everywhere. Thank you, Lord. Uh, need help. Need help. We got a couple of people coming down. Uh, interviewing, so we need uh, body man, good assemblers, and what have you. I don't know if you need anybody up there. Painter body man. Painter body man. Uh, we could use anyway. If you want to work, you have a work ethic um, and some aptitude. I bet we could could use you. Anyway, we've got a. This is Rick's car, right? Rick, or you don't know? <laughs> I don't know. That's, that's right. This is a Trinity, not the Spirit. So Rick, um, we're doing rod work again. And uh, it's an old 54 Ford, and had a straight axle in it, and it run pretty rough. And he wanted a car to run a little bit nicer. And uh, back in the day, I mean, whatever you could figure out to work. And the straight axle did run rough, but it, it wasn't a nice thing. You could put a Velari, cut a Velari up and put a Velari front end under there, or um, the old Pinto front ends, or... Um, there was another Camaro, you could cut a subframe on a Camaro or put that in there. But now it's like everything is kind of based on the Mustang II geometry. So this is a Mustang II front end. It's got a rack and pinion. And uh, so we bought a kit. We don't make one for this 54. And we bought this one. And obviously the people who make this one don't make it for a 54. So it comes and it comes with instructions. And uh, we're putting it together. And I'm looking at the instructions. I'm going, yeah, okay. Well, that ain't going to work. So there's laws and there's directions and there's instructions and there's regulations and there's rules and there's things we got to follow but sometimes this law is more important than this law and this rule is more important than this one uh, geometry is kind of a law <laughs> a, a, a rule that has to it is like holds the universe together for a lot so there's a, 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 a suspension geometry it's got a Mustang II geometry that uh, bottom line is this is not a Mustang, it's Mustang II Spindle, but it's it's all aftermarket stuff. And uh, unfortunately, it's China brand crap, is what it is. China brand crap. So anyway, they knocked off our ideas, and some company I'm not going to say who it was marketed it, and it was supposed to work. And um, again, we didn't make this system, so I just got one to to work. It just didn't fit. And you can see the frame. So if you look on the top here, here's the frame. What was the frame? Would have been right here, going across. It wasn't boxed, anything. But look at where I had to put this. You can go back on this side. I had to go and actually mount this inside the frame to get the right, I mean, I need the right width. I need the the right wheelbase. I mean, I may need to make sure that my wheels were fitting inside of the fenders. It just had, a, this is where it had to be. And whoever designed it, they just said, all right, here you go. You figure it out. So we had to cut, we had to cut the frame. And if we wouldn't have added to the frame, and then you can see on this side, this came with, with the part, but none of this did. So we had to add some bracing in for the geometry. We had to make sure the rack come under here, and I filled this in and, and really cleaned it up, and we put a, a top on here so that it was clean, and it was nice, and it was aesthetically pleasing, but more importantly, the structure's got to be right. You can't be hitting a bump here and having the whole front end got, go wanky or hit. And I was, I'm an old body man, too. I was telling the... Jordan, the guy that uh, I was working with to put this together, he did a lot of the welding and fabrication. Being an old body man, there are some principles. I can look at this and, and I, I can tell you if, if this car gets slammed at say 40 miles an hour at this angle, I can pretty much, I could draw you a picture of what it's probably going to look at like just because of the stress points and the, and the different things. If I don't want this to get over I could put a cross brace here so there's basic geometry 
and basic rules and basic fundamentals that you need to follow. Uh, once in a while, um, I don't, again, I don't work spirit too much, but we have an assembly manual for the, the tea bucket, which is pretty good. It's old and we just did it. But you, you can see, we got cars everywhere and they're all different kind of cars. They're, they're old, there's just all kinds of stuff, especially now that we got a rod shop and you're, whatever you're seeing there is just a small fraction of what's going on in the other 20,000 square feet of the place here. So there's not one rule that fits all things, but there are laws and rules that apply to everything. So the geometry here, the Ackerman angle, the things like that, all fundamentally have to be the same. So back to the, our instruction manual. Sometimes I will have people tell me that they had our instruction manual, and printed it off, and, and did it, and okay, but they're having an issue. And it, it's off this or whatever. I just remember one time this guy's arguing with me. And I had to really, really bite my tongue and say, look, dude, I'm the guy that wrote the instructions. It's an arbitrary number. I picked it because I wanted it. The bumper is this far from the front of the car because somebody said we want the bumper this far from the front of the car. That doesn't mean that it has to be there. I could cut it here and move it, well, as, as an example, on, a, on an 80s, uh, some of those shock absorber bumpers back in the five mile an hour rules and regulations made by bureaucrats that have no, they're just on their own, that was the stupidest idea ever. Well, that bumper looks stupid sitting out there. So we were actually talking to somebody and making plans on how do we push that bumper back a little bit. All right, so it won't have the five mile an hour crash, which it didn't work anyway. And if you crash at 60 miles an hour, well, you're going to have problems no matter what. So it's an arbitrary number. doesn't matter. But there are numbers that aren't arbitrary. The suspension travel. Bump steer is a real thing based on how much your travel is going up and down. I mean, a lot of, a lot of issues like that. I got thinking about this. So we got an old shop truck. All that truck is for is, is to go loading dock to loading dock. So we've got three buildings with loading docks now. If it comes out of the glass shop, we can just push it onto the back of that. We'll put a box on it and move it over to the Spirit. Or if it's something painted or whatever, we can move it over here or however. But it's an old six, six volt system. So I'm like, well, we need to do this. So I've got uh, David's changing it over. We're fixing the tires and we're just making a 12 volt system. We're just making it just more compatible with what's going on now and making it a little nicer. So he's asking me a couple of questions, so I went in and Google, Google that censorship uh, um, thing. If you, if you don't know what's going on right now, and you're kind of curious what's going on, uh, too late. Because if you want to go look for it, the people who have been telling us what's going on have been censored. They're off. But anyway, I printed this off of Google. And it's just like pages of changing over from six volts to, I don't know how many pages here, but a bunch. I really didn't look at it, but I was going to give it to him. So I give it to him, and I'm like, what, what in the world? I think a bureaucrat wrote this. Definitely a, a rule maker wrote this, because this is, we got thinking about it. Well, the starter will probably work. It will. You might need to change a little bit, depending on how much you're going to use it. But uh, the solenoid may or may not need to be changed, but you can run 12 volts through it. The generator, yeah, well, let's change it to an alternator and get rid of the regulator. Pretty simple. We'll put a 12 volt coil in it, and uh, if I or I could put a ballast resistor, but a 12 volt coil. Make sure it's a still a negative ground, and and boom, there you go. Instead of reading a book about, I mean, holy mackerel. So anyway, I got the book. A lot of paper. I can turn it over and use it for scrap paper, I guess. And but following the directions is a good thing sometimes. Learning from experience is a good thing sometimes. Learning from someone who's been experienced to teach you is a way better thing. It's a concept that we've kind of forgot about. But anyway, we're con converting that to a 12-volt system in pretty simple format. Change the coil, had a generator. You can change the ballast resistor and change the generator a little bit, but we just put an alternator on it, make sure the ground is a um, you know negative ground instead of a positive ground. Some of the years had a, a positive ground, which be careful of that and moving that ahead. So anyway, we're, we're getting kind of excited. Lots and lots and lots of things going on. 
It's going to be an exciting year. And uh, grand opening on the 30th of January. Hopefully everybody can make it. It's uh, it's going to be big time. A lot of lot a lot of response. To, we'll have to do a video over there maybe tomorrow or next week. Cars everywhere. We're finishing up. It's looking really good. It's getting exciting. Um, just different projects going on. If we ever get, we're so busy. I don't know that we really want to do a whole lot more videos because we just appreciate. We're blessed incredibly, but we're we're really appreciative of everybody that follows the videos. People come all the time and say they watch them all and. And uh, it does help us generate work. And we're not turning any work down. I'm just, we're not going out of our way to get more work right now either, because we have so much. And a lot of people say they, they actually appreciate this part of the video. So, and whether they appreciate it or not, or whether you appreciate it or not is really irrelevant. Um, this is part of it. This is, I put it at the end. Uh, honestly, I put it at the end for two reasons. I knew censorship was coming and didn't want to really get our site taken down. And for two, if you don't like it, well, you can watch the front and watch the, you know, just see this part in the back. And if you do like it and don't like that car stuff, well, you always know you can zip through the car stuff and get to the end. So here we are. So Peter, he's like out there doing all this crazy stuff. And I mean crazy stuff like these, I mean, it, healing people, it's just crazy stuff. And he's telling people about Jesus, who they just killed. And uh, I don't know if they ever felt guilty about it or not, but they, they didn't want him to become a martyr and, and have more power after the fact. You know, once you get rid of him, you want him gone. You don't want him to be like turning into something else. So anyway, they grab Peter and they put him in jail and it's like, don't be doing this. You can't do it. No, they beat him, put him in jail. And so then the next day they, they go to the high priest go to get him out of the jail and, and of course the angels came <laughs> opened the doors and off they went and then we have no they're not in the jail so what happened they didn't listen to the rules they didn't listen to the instructions they didn't listen to the to the ordinances they didn't listen to the to the high priest who said you can't do that don't do that or do this or don't do that or put your mask on or don't do this or it's just a, just a regulation by somebody. But where's the real law? I mean, that's, that's what we're going to try to get to here. So they bring Peter before them. And, uh, and they tell him, I'm just going to read that. It's in Acts, uh, the fifth chapter. And if you might want to read the whole chapter. It's pretty interesting, but I'm not going to go the whole thing. I'm going to start the 27th verse. He said, when they had brought them, they set them before the council. And the high priest questioned them, saying, we strictly charge you not to teach in his name. Yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teachings, and you intend to bring this man blood on us. But Peter and the apostles answered, We must obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised Jesus from whom you killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at the right hand as leader and savior to give repentance to the Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses to these things. And so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to us, whom and to, to us whom obey him. And when they heard this, they were enraged and wanted to kill them. And uh, sometimes people just don't want to hear the truth. They get enraged. They get carried away. And sometimes it's just like, who do we obey? Where's the higher law? The regulations, the rules of a bureaucrat who is under no authority than other than his own, making rules and regulations that tell us what we can and can't do, or is there like a, a higher authority? Is there a constitutional law? Is there a is there a common law? Is there a law that says nothing but um, kind of a six things? Don't steal from me. I won't steal from you. Don't hurt me. I won't hurt you. Don't kill me. I won't kill you. I mean, after that, doing to others. You have to do unto you. I mean, love your neighbors yourself. But we get a lot of rules, a lot of laws. Which ones actually do we have to submit to? Who are we? Are we uh, living souls, citizens of the United States of America, the Republic? 
under constitutional law or are we bound by rules and regulations written by bureaucrats and an and a, and a organization that wants to keep us under their control. So anyway, that's it for today. Sometimes you can't play by the rules. If we'd have played by the rules, this car would never be going down the road the way it needs to. But we got our geometry right. Well, I think we've got everything. We got our, it's looking good. We just put the front end. I'm sure already because we measured it, the wheels are going to fit inside of the, the wheelhouses. We're going to put a little bit bigger tire than what it had originally just to make it look good. I've got good angles. And there's another rule. I, got, I can go 15 degrees on my, my joint and I can come out of here and go 15 degrees, actually 14 degrees. But if I go more than that, it starts binding. So we've, we've got the angles right there. So if you're doing a project like this, try to think two or three or four steps ahead because uh, it's a game of chess sometimes, 3D chess. So you got to think way out there to plan your, plan your moves. So anyway, till next time, have a great day.